coffee alert. You better have your coffee with you because we're going to do some rambling. Yes, no BS today. But we are going to ramble, which maybe that's kind of like BS joinery in some ways. Anyway, uh, welcome back to the shop. I'm glad to see you. I wanted to just kind of ramble about a couple of quick things. Uh, first, let me tell you that I am on a new OTB thing. I've been looking really hard at latex surgical tubing. This stuff is really very cool stuff. I've used it a little bit, but now I'm starting to realize that I think I'm going to replace the use of springs and bungee cords completely and use only this for anything I need if I need some kind of spring action from it. I think we can do something like that with this and get a better result and definitely last longer than a bungee cord will. Those things don't last very long. So anyway, if you have any thoughts about this stuff or any ideas of projects, I have a couple of projects I wanted to show you uh, that I plan on using this on. And so I'll show those to you when it comes, but this is one of my OTB things. I am thinking about something else and definitely to use that, you're going to have to go outside the box. So, uh, the main thing I want, the two things I wanted to really talk about here though, is what I'm, uh, I wanted to give you some couple of quick tips. First, about this. This is a just a parallel clamp, and these are really handy to have in the shop. I actually only use the two smaller sizes. I've never had one of the big ones, and maybe they'd be handy too. But the little ones are really handy, especially if you want. If you look at my OTB vise, uh, I used one of these and turned it into a nice little vise on my desk, and that has been a wonderful uh, addition. And two of those. You can set them apart from each other, and you can set something in between and clamp it down. So it gives you that double vice to be able to clamp up anything of any length and by using two of them instead of one. So I, you can check those out. But the, about this, if you just use it like this and you don't want to revamp it, there are two things you can do to make this thing work better. Uh, one of them is I put sandpaper. And if you use a 400 grit, it's probably best, but put sandpaper on them. And what that will do is that will allow that grip to grip better with less torque to tighten it down. And it's less likely to slip. It, it takes away that slick wood surface and turns it into a non-slick surface. Very quick and easy. I use it on a lot of things if I don't want it to slip on, on vice jaws and all sorts of things. My original grippers, I was using that method. So that would be, that is a big improvement on these things. The other thing that uh, I did to mine is, it, first off, you have to know about these clamps inherently, that if you have something in here and you tighten it down, if you can tighten it down from this clamp or this clamp, this is the clamp you want to do your final tightening with. And the reason is, is that, believe it or not, you can make that tighter, a lot tighter, several times tighter. With the, bowler, with the lower one than you can with the one that's closer to where you're clamping. So pushing this apart to clamp, you can get better leverage here than you can here. The other thing I did is, because when you're putting something in there and you want it to kind of adjust so that you're kind of parallel, I might take both of these. So usually if I'm working with one hand, this is going to be my final tightening. And when I put this in there to tighten it, to adjust it, I might look at it and see my jaw when I get it to where I want it so that when I'm ready, I think that's pretty close. Now I can take the bottom one here and I turn it in to tighten it and just that quick and easy and with a little bit of snugness, I tighten this up and this is quick and easy to do by using these two knobs to help me align it up. It really helps you to line these up so that your, sometimes your clamp could be so far out of alignment that if you want to clamp something broad, like this way, and you want it to fully contact this whole surface, you got to get those blades pretty close to parallel. So you kind of got to go back and forth a little bit so that when you finally tighten this bottom one up, it's pulling in right at the very bottom here to pull in to tighten it and that pulls that in so much tighter with a lot less force than if I try to use this one. Now I put this knob on here to help that little adjustment 
as I can go back and forth with the same hand to adjust my jaws till I get them where I kind of want them. So this is a great addition to your pedal oak clamp to make it easier to use while you're trying to clamp it down too, rather than having to keep switching hands to figure out how to tighten this down. It's nice to do it in here. The other thing I did is that because this is my tightening handle, not this one. I always tighten with this one. The other thing I did, oops, let me reach this, is I drilled a quick hole in there far enough in that I can drop that in and now I can really get some good leverage. If I really want to torque this, this really helps. So that hole was a handy addition too to my clamp. Don't get it too far in or you'll hit your handle on this. Uh, I can't remember how far in it is, but I can tell you one thing. If you hit that, you might as well redrill your hole a little further out because you're not going to drill through that. But try to keep your hole from hitting the end of that rod that's embedded in here if you can. But a nice little hole to make it into a T-handle quick and easy to get that final leverage tightening if you need it. So that's the whole thing in a nutshell. And when you loosen, believe it or not, once this is really super tight, it takes a lot more pressure to loosen from this one than it does from this one. So just a food for thought. Uh, something about these clamps I thought I'd share with you. The last thing I want to talk about is blast gates. So on the blast gates, you I, the question you have, first thing I had when I always and never hear anybody talk about ask the question is, is is it bi-directional? In other words, can I hook the dust collector on this side or this side? Or do I have to put it on which side and which side is that? Well, I can tell you right now, there's two basic styles out there. The plastic ones like this and the metal ones like this. And these cost about twice as much as those, give or take, about somewhere around that. And in all reality, this one is not bi-directional and this one is bi-directional. And the reason is, first let's go over this, because one thing you should know about this, if you don't already, is what makes these things a problem, why most people really hate them after a while, is that this builds up with dust in here, and then eventually this gate won't close. It hits against all that piled up dust in the pocket down here at the very bottom. Right here at the very bottom, it pockets up inside there. Now I drilled a big hole here and here, about a half inch or a 9 sixteenths hole and that helped keep some of the dust out it still tried to build up here so but it did help to help it keep it clean so when every time you shut it then when it shoved the dust down in there a little bit but when you open it then it would suck in through there the problem with doing that is that now you have an air leak here and you've re you've reduced the amount of vacuum you have here because you also have air leaking here that's the biggest problem with this one because what makes this one different than that one is it has this slot here for a clean out. So when this is closed, it knocks the dirt right out and it can't build up in there. But this one also is only one direction. You have to put it on properly. And if you take a look at where this bolt is, and there's a, a raised area right here on the gate, when that thing is closed, that is pushing down into the slot and it's pushing this plate down. Then when you tighten this nut down, the bolt down here, that plate's being pushed against this outlet. So this is the side you want your dust collector on. If you put it on this side and that plate will not seal to this side here, you'll have a constant leak coming in around here and here. Even when you have dust collector on and the gate is closed. So you have to put this on this way. And I don't know if anybody ever talked about which way you really want to have one of these type of gates. On this one, you don't have to really worry about that so much. But this one, yes, you better. Um, the other thing about these things is that when you open them up, because of this opening here, when you open this up, you now have air leaking here and here and you lose a certain amount of that vacuum that's supposed to only be coming from here. So this gate has a certain amount of loss beyond this four inches here. It's not as efficient as this one is. And if you want to try to squeeze all the suction you can get without any leaks, 
this one is not a very good choice for being able to do that because uh, and people say well I put a little flap on that but if you put a flap on that what are you gonna do about the air leaking here you still got air leaking this only half solves the problem so that's the inherent this one has the leak when it's open and this one has a problem with the clogging when you close it so there is a third alternative and that's just you can make your own with a, with an own clean out let me show you a quick example of that I did it right here this was a manifold that I built several years ago and this one uh, this one because there's three of them and had a, a plate on here that I used so I could open it up if I needed to clean it out but what I did with these is these have uh, they're completely sealed when you open it up the only air sucking in is in the hole itself but it has a clean out when I pull that out right under here now when I push the gate down it actually is coming out down here in this open area that means that any dirt that was built up here when I take that out and I push it down all that dirt has now gotten pushed out so I open it back up clean out all the dust put that back in and now it's in its normal closed position as it builds up a dirt I'll see I have a line on here so I'll see that thing when I close it it's not closing all the way to the line eventually and then I know that I have to clean it out I flip it open clean it out flip it closed and the beauty of this is is that this design is that when it's open the only leak is here there's no air being sucked in through here so you don't have that loss that you get with a gate like this with an open clean out so this is the best of both worlds is design your own with a clean out now what's the easiest way to make this this thing is actually easy peasy to make all you need is a couple of pieces a piece of scrap wood you cut it into two pieces that are going to be your basic blast gate so just imagine that if you cut this off right here this blast gate would only be about five inches wide four inches wide for a two and a half inch hose and what you do is you cut two pieces but this one is a one quarter inch narrower than the width of this piece here so that you can see it comes up a little short they're even even here but this one is a quarter inch short that is to give a relief area for this to be able to slot down in here because you put a bottom on it and then you have this slot that's created by this piece being shorter and that's where you seal it completely so that uh, so that it can't shut and bring in vacuum and you pull this out for the clean out now the blast gate when you take this top piece and you make a dado in it you make it the width of your blast gate and make the depth of your dado the thickness of your blast gate and you make this dado all the way through this piece here so it comes out the bottom so that when I sandwich the two together you put this piece in here and you push it it'll come all the way through and come out the other side um, now I did put a pin in mine but that was to stop it from being able to pull out the top uh, so that I don't have that there's lots of ways you could do something there if you really wanted to but that was just quick and simple and this is more than enough vacuum for this style of what I was using but the nice thing about this is is that it's easy to clean out and when I'm not cleaning it out I have my piece in there and it's put together like this now when it closes it goes against this it's in its normal close and there's no leaking when I open it the only air being sucked is through the hole because under here I have this piece sealing off the bottom on the aluminum one this piece isn't there so air is sucking in that's why you need the little clean out cover and, and when I did the single ones that I did I wish I could have found one but I don't know where they're at uh, but you could very easily take this piece and round off the end and then you could put it in there and pin it so that then all you have to do is pivot it up out of the way and then close it when you after you cleaned it out It'd be easy to do to make a nice clean out but that's the idea is to make a good clean out that also is sealed so that you don't get the air leak and now you get the best of both worlds you can clean it out and you don't have to worry about it sucking air when it's open from areas that you don't want it to uh, so that's the third example of a blast gate I just thought I'd kind of go over a couple of things here uh, if you have any questions about any of this just leave it in the comments I love to read the comments um, 
and I try to respond to them if you ask a question. So, but if you have any suggestions or any stories about what you have, I'd love to hear it. Um, if you have any pictures of something like that of interest, you want to send them to me? There's my email address, otb-thinker at cpamomy.com. Anyway, just send them there. Any pics? I love to watch this, look at that stuff. If you want to get on the list of getting any of those pics that I get and want to see them, let me know. Uh, send me an email, and I'll put you in a group. And then when you send me a picture, if you don't mind me sharing it, uh, just let me know when you give it to me, and I'll make sure I take just the pictures and put them in an email and send them on to everybody else. They won't get your email address. So I'm not into sharing emails, but I will share the pics with anybody that wants them. And that's one way of doing it. So just send me an email and get on the group if you want to do that. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, comments, if you like this video, you learned something here, hit that like button. It lets me know I'm doing something right. So, hmm. most importantly, please come back again because I'm nowhere near with a little more BS coming and rambling. So, thanks, and we'll see you guys again very soon.